up there. Let me go down. Plus, I sent it to you in, I sent it to you someplace. So, um, <laughs> it, it's out there in the cloud. Uh, so, here's what, here's, here's, here's what I, here's uh, my vision as to what I want in the future. Uh, I'm going to put it back so you all can see. Is it, I would like to see us train hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of potential entrepreneurs. Or millions of entrepreneurs. Give people a chance to learn entrepreneurship. And um, how do you do that? Actually, it's kind of easy. It's not easy now. But you do this through massively online open courses. Have any of you taken the edX class? So, was that helpful? Yeah. Yeah, it's not the same experience as the being here. Who else took it? Did anybody else take it? Did, did, was it helpful? Yeah, it's an introduction. So you can go online tomorrow, and people do around the entire world, and they take the online class, Entrepreneurship 101, 102, and they find this, and they find it very, very helpful. Entrepreneurship becomes demystified to them. And I would encourage you to go in and take a look at the class. You might seem simple after this. But you can then get other people to do it. And they don't they can take entrepreneurship anytime, anywhere, and they can basically get a sampling of what you've gotten here or what you can get at MIT, Stanford, Strathclyde, University of Edinburgh. In their in their underwear at home at three o'clock in the morning. Right? <laughs> they can do this. And it's powerful because you go through the pedagogy that's there, now they get on the internet, and then there are case studies that they can they can have. So of those people, then what I go is, those people who are do a good job here, let's identify them and bring them up the funnel. They earn the opportunity to go to the next step. Um, so it is an incredibly inclusive system to teach entrepreneurship. Because who knows where the next great entrepreneur is? Are they sitting at University of Edinburgh, Strathclyde, University of Sterling? Are they sitting at MIT? Uh, there's a chance that they might be born to a Syrian father out of wedlock to a Catholic German mother in Wisconsin and put up for adoption. Um, <laughs> that's Steve Jobs. That's Steve Jobs. And then I can tell you about many other stories of entrepreneurs who are outside the mainstream and finding those people and giving them the opportunity and being inclusive to everyone. You know, uh, that is huge. So... But the people who do well here, we can identify and bring up to this thing called a SPOC. So the marginal cost here is essentially zero once it's developed. That's the wrong way. No, that's the right way. I'm going to use dollars. It, but after we go from here, we can identify via the click stream. Oh, this is it. Right. We can identify via the click stream who are the people who do well and who are ambitious. And we can take 1% of those people and we can bring them up to this thing called a SPOC. So if you have a one percent, that's still a thousand people, right? So you, we could bring up thousand people. I'm going to go to the slides now. Okay. Well done. Right. Well, definitely. Your PhD was worthwhile. An immunology. So let me just jump here. So here's the idea: is that you have a a MOOC, and this that we already know that this works today, because we've had three hundred thousand people take the online course with no marketing, basically. No marketing. Um, and then we've, you can find out to the SPOC, which is special private online class, where the thousand best people now go on, and they can take a more advanced online course where there's a little more TLC, they're teaching assistants, there are you know, qu quizzes and things like that. And here there are quizzes. This isn't just watching a video. There are assessments, there's, uh, there's case studies, there's um, a final exam, and then but we can tell who these people are at very little cost because we just watch their click stream. And the best people would come up here, and then those thousand people would be in what they call advanced MOOC here. They, it's me, I made the slides. But that's because they wanted, I would call it a SPOC, Special Private Online Class, where you can take it anytime, anywhere. You can be in Orkney and you can take this class. You could be in uh, Namibia, how do you pronounce it? Namibia. Namibia, right? Is that it? Namibia? Namibia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would, you, those people, those thousand people, they could take that class and then they could 
I'm an American, for God's sake. We have no class. All right? And then out of those people who are on there, you could take the 100 best, and they could go to regional boot camps around, let's say, Scotland in this case. They could be at Strathclyde. They could be at University of Glasgow. They could be at the University of Edinburgh. They could be at Highlands and Islands. They could be strong. You could have these around the country where you have these ones. The best ones out of that would come to a national boot camp, something like this. And then the best ones out of that would get to go to a place like MIT, all right? And that would be kind of the funnel where you would earn your opportunity to go here to this. And that, that's the idea here, is that um, you would, the, this would be an incentive system to find those great entrepreneurs. Yes? Bill, um, as somebody who's gone to the University of Edinburgh and gone through the PhD program, but as also somebody who has grown up in Namibia, I find it highly elitist, you know, and just the approach to entrepreneurship. It takes a high level of education and a conceptual understanding of the world to sometimes get to the high level that you're talking about. But that's not to say there are people out there who don't have a high education, who don't have great ideas that can be really scaled up. And, you know, and I think there's a role that universities can actually play in nurturing those people who don't have the same sort of access to resources. But then I feel like instead universities sort of concentrate within their own little networks and within their own little environment, and I don't think we're making as great an impact on the world as we could, as we could make. Are you, are you like cheerleading why this is such a great model, or are you... <laughs> That's exactly why this model exists. But you need a computer and you need uh, access to internet on a regular basis, no? Well, well uh, we, we can't solve the problem. So let me just tell you, I can show you tweets from people in Africa who, said, who sent me tweets. They said, for the first time in my life, I see a path to financial independence. Because the world today now does have access to internet. Many places. Not everyone. I, we can't tell... But what we're trying to do is be inclusive at a level we have never been before. We have hundreds of thousands of people. The cost to get in here, the friction to get in here, is what I would argue is essentially zero. You're